Deakin University is a relatively young, progressive university. Uh, it's quite a comprehensive university. It goes right from the arts through medicine, science, engineering, and it has about 35,000 students. The Institute for Frontier Materials is a multidisciplinary research institute um, with about 270 researchers. We have chemists, biologists, engineers, materials engineers, all working together in a multidisciplinary way to try and tackle some of the major problems for society going into the future. Um, there are two research areas I'm currently involved in. One is in the area of corrosion uh, science, so corrosion mitigation and corrosion prevention, and the other is in the area of energy storage, so new materials for energy storage applications. Uh, the aim is to develop new energy storage technologies to enable primarily um, renewables. So a lot of the work we've done in the last two decades has been based around um, lithium batteries for electric vehicle applications, which is exciting and, and important. But I think what's more important for the future now is looking at uh, being able to store energy from renewable, such as um, solar energy, wind power, uh, for example, which are intermittent sources. I really hope in the next five to ten years that we have developed new technologies that will allow us to really start making the move away from coal power in Australia to solar and wind. And I think that um, the work we're doing at IFM and around the country um, will, will hopefully contribute to that and, and we, we, we see us cutting our CO2 emissions. Well, I think that we have some of the world's leading researchers in various aspects of materials engineering, um, particularly in the energy area, uh, in metals in particular, we're well known around the world. It's a very multicultural environment, so we have about 170 PhD students from over 40 nationalities. It's also equipped with state-of-the-art infrastructure, which I guess many materials groups will have, but we go right from looking at the atom level through to the ability to make large structures all in one building. Yeah, our facility is uh, unique because uh, we can make the material at one part of our uh, plant and at the other end we can uh, image individual atoms and uh, calculate where they are and, and what they're doing to change the properties of the material. One of our favourite projects for the reduction of the energy consumption is the development of new magnesium alloys. Magnesium is the lightest engineering metal. It's about two-thirds the density of aluminium and uh, engineers at the moment are not applying it in all the applications that they could and so we're developing new alloys to make it more friendly for the design engineer. We have a new centre called AFRIC, which stands for the Australian Future Fibres Research and Innovation Centre. This is a major activity where we're looking at the future in all sorts of fibres, but particularly carbon fibre. Carbon fibre goes into carbon fibre composites, which is underpinning a lot of the developments in the world in terms of transport. It gives us the potential to have very lightweight with high strength, so hence less fuel used for either aircraft or for automotive industries. Within AFRIC, we have a commercial scale carbon fibre facility being actually built at the Warren Ponds campus. This will be the first what we call open access carbon fibre production facility in the world. And we believe that it will attract all sorts of players in the automotive and aerospace industry around the world to come and do carbon fibre research at Deakin. I'm currently working uh, with the Composites Group that's led by Associate Professor Bronwyn Fox at IFM. Uh, I work in the manufacture of carbon fibre composite materials and also characterising the materials once they're manufactured and now I'm moving into the characterisation and the manufacture of carbon fibre itself. Students benefit greatly by being a part of our research. Um, they've had so many opportunities they otherwise wouldn't have. They've been able to go over to Germany to manufacture carbon fibre composites. Um, we do work at the University of Manchester as well. So there's so many opportunities for their work and also to travel as being a part of this research. It's a very supportive environment. We take a lot of care and pride in creating a very supportive environment for the students to grow, um, to develop as people as well as develop their research during their PhD. The thing is that the academics and the administrative staff members at IFM are truly approachable, they are supportive and at the same time they give you prompt feedback even in their very busy schedule. I believe that's the reason I could grow both professionally and personally during my PhD candidature at IFM. The sorts of skills we're trying to instill in our graduates are really high levels of problem solving. We also spend a lot of time on their presentation skills. It's one thing to be able to do research, it's another to be able to sell your research ideas uh, to the community, to business, etc. And so we really try and spend a lot of time developing those skills as well.
If I look forward 10 years from now, I think that I want the Institute to be known for doing absolutely outstanding fundamental research, but be able to also see it translated into industrial outcomes. That's really the key, is trying to work out how do we combine this discovery research with what society actually needs to solve these problems. We see AFRIC as being one of the fundamental building blocks for our future research for the next decade and beyond.